Let's begin with the most notable injury storyline of the week. It's the Vikings and the Packers. Stefania, every single day, people are wondering what's the latest on Aaron Rodgers. And to a degree, I mean, it's, it's sort of slid under the radar, his top wide receiver, Devontae Adams. But let's begin with A.A. Ron. What do we know about Rodgers' well, status? Uh, Mike McCarthy speaking this morning said Aaron Rodgers is feeling better, that he's getting better every day. I still think this is going to come down to a game-time decision. The, the bottom line for the Packers is they want to make sure that he can move well enough to protect himself. That's the number one. And then number two is to be effective. I think he proved he could be effective when injured. We've seen him play through an injury before. I referenced the calf strain that he had a couple of years ago. They had to adjust the way they managed the offense for an Aaron Rodgers that can't scramble as effectively. But I would... I wouldn't be surprised if they said, you know what, one more week and you'll be a lot better and held him out either. So I, I don't think you're going to know until Sunday. And then Devontae Adams, a shoulder issue that had him out of practice Wednesday, practiced a little bit yesterday and said his shoulder felt great. So he also is considered day-to-day, -day, but certainly making improvements. I think if he has another good practice today, you'll see Devontae Adams. Matthew, if Aaron Rodgers sits out this game on Sunday, or even if he does play and you're nervous about him, are there a couple quarterbacks that might come to mind to you as particularly favorable matchups that you're saying, all right, Hey, I have Aaron Rodgers, but I also have maybe his counterpart in this game, Kirk Cousins, or Jared Goff might be available in my league. How low are you going before you say, I'm it's, it's time for me to substitute Aaron Rodgers out of my lineup? Well, certainly this makes you nervous, right? I mean, the fact of the matter is, <laughs> ah, ha, ha, ding, hit the bell. So if I just a bell. There's one. We found the SP3, The bottom by line the way. is this. On Aaron Rodgers, it makes you nervous <laughs> going against a Mike Zimmer defense. People forget he got injured last year against the same Vikings defense field. Does it get somewhere in the back of his head, especially that he's not as mobile as he can to to escape defenders? There are guys out there that are available. Uh, to me, the, the person that is available in the most leagues that I think is the most obvious is Tyrod Taylor. Mm, okay. So I am as a top 12 fantasy quarterback. I mean, I think Foles has a good game. Jared Goff, I have them as mid-tier QB2s. Look, Mahomes is out there in a handful of leagues. Garoppolo maybe in a couple of leagues. But honestly, if Aaron Rodgers is starting, you're probably starting him. Tyrod would be the only person I would consider here. Worth noting, however, uh, my bookie and other Vegas Sites. Smart peep sites have taken this game off the board. Correct. So you have to wonder, there's at least there's legitimate concern that he misses this game. I think there's people out there that feel like, oh, come on, it's Aaron Rodgers. Like he's going to make the dramatic, the Willis Reed. He's going to come back and play it. Uh, I think there's a real chance, to Stefania's point, that he misses this game. So if he does play, though, let's operate on the, on the idea that he does play. This Vikings defense is one of the most popular for fantasy football. And we saw another great one last night in Baltimore just get run over by the Bengals. Would you start the Vikings defense if Aaron Rodgers plays? Yeah, because he's gonna he's going to he's going to be mobile, and I don't know that you want to carry two defenses, especially at this point in the season. And there's a lot of injuries, so you're probably trying to fill a, a spot somewhere else. Like I I would rather pick up T.J. Yeldon, for example, uh, than another defense. I'd roll the dice with the Vikings defense. Here. So the running back workload in Green Bay, again, operating under the idea that Aaron Rodgers is going to play, was notable last week. And as you've been making this point, if he does play, you're expecting to see a ton of shotgun snaps just to protect Aaron Rodgers, a three-yard bubble to yeah. prevent him Definitely. from rushers. How does this backfield split shake out if Aaron Rodgers does play? Because I think if he doesn't play, it probably just means bad things all the way around for the offense. Correct. Is there? Let's go there for one second, then I'll answer your running back question. If Rodgers does not play, is there a Packer you're willing to start? Uh, Devontae Adams. And yeah. Jamal Williams based off your running back depth. Yeah, I mean, I think they would go heavy with Jamal Williams uh, if Rodgers were to miss. But Adams would be a would be like a wide receiver two for me uh, with Kaiser there under center against the Vikings. I assume probably Xavier Rhodes is on him. I could actually see Randall Cobb doing some some damage here. Uh, that's that's one area where I think you can exploit the Vikings a little bit here. In terms of your running back question, I don't have a ton of confidence in Jamal Williams. I think it would be a lot of Jamal Williams because he's who they trust the most in pass protection. He's going to be in the shotgun almost the entire game, and he's not going to be particularly mobile. So Rodgers is going to want the guy that he feels the best to handle the bliss. That's Jamal Williams on the Packers roster at the moment. But he's not somebody I'm starting. I have him as running back 35 field. You'd have to be pretty far down before you'd feel comfortable starting Jamal Williams against the Vikings. You answer this question if 
if Rodgers does not play. But if he does play, do we think there can be three fantasy-relevant wide receivers in Green Bay's offense against a very, very talented Vikings defense? Because I think it's far less like I think it's possible that any of Devontae Adams or Randall Cobb or Jerron Lawson could have a productive game. I don't think it's possible that all three of them have a productive game. I think it would be surprising, too. I'm never going to count against Aaron Rodgers. Mm. Anytime you say, well, that can't be done, Aaron Rodgers goes out and does it. Mm, sure. Right? So if ever there was a guy that could do it, it's Aaron Rodgers, even Aaron Rodgers at less than 100%. Having said that, I mean, neither of you ranked Toronto Miles, and I have him in the yeah, 40s. I the back end of my 40s. 40, I mean, so, you know, I do think Randall Cobb is actually the most interesting to me, especially given the Devontae Adams, you know, banged up a little bit here. Remember, when Rodgers returned to action in the second half of last week, 90% of his targeted throws came from the shotgun. 84 point, I'm sorry, 86.4% of Cobb's fantasy points from Rodgers have come when he's in the shotgun.